joins us now. Look, obviously, very much the focus on our market day expectations. And do you expect that sort of end of quarter type of trading to have much of an impact as it has potentially over the last few sessions? The last couple of sessions have been extremely good for the Australian market. And that's because in the last quarter, we've seen the Aussie market gaining 7%. But comparing it against the US market, we're, we're actually underperforming. In fact, if we have a look at the S&P 500, up by 12%. Even if you factor in the Aussie dollar, actually the Australian market performance is even worse in, uh, in US dollar terms, so only up by 5%. That compares to the US up by 12%, Japan, which is up by almost 20%. Still, the Australian market has managed to uh, outperform some of our peers. The London FTSE only up by 3.1% in the quarter, and the Shanghai Composite China up by 2.4%. Our underperformance probably due to a number of factors during the quarter, and the biggest one has been the downgrade that we've seen to Chinese growth from 8% to 7.5%. That's had a big impact in terms of the material sector. But secondly, also the, the interest rates here domestically has had an impact on the Aussie dollar as well as profitability of Australian companies and the flow of investments coming into the stock market. And thirdly, we have seen a downgrade in terms of full year expectations uh, for earnings coming through from that last earnings season. So still in that downgrade cycle uh, by analysts, we're probably near the end of that now. But in terms of the quarterly performance, earnings have been disappointing in comparison to US growth. One of the biggest things during the quarter, I think, has been the, the miners. We've seen BHP Billiton down by half a percent while Rio Tinto has managed to gain 6%. But it's really Fortescue which has taken the cake and the prize for the best performance out of the three, up by a massive 37%. And it does look like investors are getting tired of waiting uh, for some of BHP and Rio Tinto's longer-term strategies. Fortescue, meanwhile, is due to ramp up its iron ore production uh, by 2013. So it does look like gaining more favor there. And in terms of sectors, it's been the industrial sector which has been the outperformer, despite the Leighton's downgrade that we saw yesterday. Information technology and the energy sector also doing well with gains of more than 10%. And in terms of the best stock in the ASX 200, it's been one steel, which has managed to gain more than 70% during the quarter. So all up, a good run for the Aussie market, up by 7%, outperforming uh, the Chinese market as well as the FTSE, but not the US market and the Japanese market. Julia, just on BHP, look, we spoke at, at length about BHP yesterday in Market Day, but it is such a widely held stock. People have an enormous amount of interest in it. You mentioned the underperformance that it's had, not just against the market, but against its big mining peer, Rio Tinto. Do you see any sort of uh, cloud clearing on the horizon for BHP? BHP was interesting article in some of the papers suggesting investors once again questioning on the back obviously of BlackRock selling down its interest that the big long-term capex plans that it has they'd like to see maybe shorter term ventures maybe JVs and of course as always investors would like to see perhaps a little bit of buy our capital management some more buybacks. Unfortunately, in this type of market, investors do uh, look at shorter time frames rather than a 10-year time frame. People are probably looking at one to three-year time frames, and we certainly saw that out of BlackRock yesterday, saying while BHP Billiton is a strong uh, stock, that it doesn't fit into its two to three investment time frame. And indeed, if we have a look at capital expenditure for BHP and its growth plans, it's looking to pretty much double its iron ore production by, by 2020. So this is a company that is looking to invest in its uh, future over the next decade. That compares to Fortescue, which is also ramping up production, but it's looking at ramping up uh, to 155 million tonnes per annum by mid-2013. So its plans are a lot shorter base, and I guess the market uh, is showing a little bit of disc discontent with uh, BHP and Rio Tinto strategy, but it does look like it is looking to back Fortescue. It is a difficult market to take a longer term 10-year uh, view in, and I guess the market is struggling to balance those medium term that that medium term outlook with the uh, longer term outlook and it looks like at the moment that medium term outlook is the one that is winning so BHP Rio Tinto very strong stocks looking at big capital expenditure plans for the future but I guess the market investors looking at shorter time frames to see a return on their investment look market also looking at a very interesting shareholder meeting today Ausstar uh, shareholders getting together obviously timelines and a few things still up in the air regards the the Foxtel uh, takeover approach what are you expecting 
We're going to be watching this Austar meeting to see whether shareholders do okay this deal. But of course, the big thing for Austar's share price is the ACCC decision. And the date to watch there is the 13th of April. There's a $1.52 bid on the table. And the market's probably ascribing around about a 30% probability to this takeover going through. If the deal does fail, I guess shareholders can expect a capital return of about 16 cents. An underlying growth for Austar is also looking good. They've, uh, they've got the AFL content now and they've got a greater sports content which should help to underpin growth. Some of the risks on the downside are macroeconomic weakness being one of them but also perhaps more competition coming through from the MBN but the near-term drivers of Austar share price very much at a triple C decision and that $1.52 bid on the table so the shareholder meeting will be watched very closely but the other date to watch out for is the 13th of April.